Hi, today we will solve exercises related to gradient. Let's begin with exercise one. Uh, consider this cash flow uh, diagram presented below. Uh, you need to determine uh, the required annual deposits uh, that will generate the cash flow from year four to seven. Assume that the interest rate is 10%. Now, uh, we agreed that whatever you're gonna pay will allow you to uh, make several withdrawals so I will equate uh, withdrawals to the deposits and I need to calculate what will be the deposit you notice here that I have a deposit made at year zero so I cannot say that this part is related to the annuity the annuity will be starting from year one to year seven with the amount uh, the unknown amount C so when I want to calculate uh, the present value of this annuity, you will say that the first arrow is added. This means that I will say C plus the present value of this annuity. This is if you want uh, to equate at year zero. We said that you are free to equate at whichever point uh, at your timeline. So you can equate at the present, equate at the future, or maybe equate at year three because the present value uh, of uh, this uh, arithmetic gradient is located at period three. So you feel free to choose the method of solution that you like. Now here I want uh, to equate at the present. So what will be the present value of uh, these uh, deposits? It will be, as we said, C, because this is already located at the present value. And the present of the annuity, it will be P equals A, or in this case, it's C. And to P knowing A, I, which is 10%, and N, which is the period of seven years. So this is uh, related to the uh, part of deposits. Now, if I want to get the present value of this arithmetic gradient, remember that when I want to calculate the present value of uh, an arithmetic gradient, you'll have to split it into two parts. Part related to the annuity, which is the base amount, which is in this case is the $1,000. So you will be getting the present value of this annuity plus the present value of the gradient. And what is the gradient in this case? The amount is being added by $200, $200. So the gradient in this case is $200. So uh, applying the equation uh, will give you uh, P equals A, the 1000, into P knowing A, I, N. How many periods or how many um, amounts do we have? It's 4, so N equals to 4. Plus the present worth of the gradient, P equals G into P knowing G, I, N. N is 4 and G is 200. Now, where is the present value of this gradient? We agreed that it is the previous period. So as if I'm getting the present, of this, this gradient at year three. Now, whatever I'm gonna get here, okay, is far away from my present by three periods. So as if this becomes the resultant of this arithmetic gradient that I got here is a future value uh, regarding period uh, zero. So if I want to calculate its present value, I will say P equals F, into P knowing F, I, which is 10%, and N, which is 3, because it's far away by 3 periods. So by equating both sides in this way, you will get the value of C, which is in this case $518. Consider the second exercise. Here we have a couple is planning to finance their 5-year-old daughter's college education. Uh, they established a fund that earns 10%. What annual deposit must be made from the daughter's fifth birthday, which is now the present value, to her 16th birthday to meet the future expenses shown in the following table? Now assume that today is her fifth birthday. So I know that uh, from year five, the, uh, or from uh, the daughter's fifth birthday till ex the 16th birthday, uh, a deposit of C amount will be made and uh, the first uh, withdrawn amount will take place at the daughter's 18th birthday. 
uh, were to pay the college uh, tuitions of $25,000 and uh, these amounts will continue to increase and you can see that it increases by a gradient of uh, $2,000 uh, from year 18 to the year 21. So I need to find uh, the amount C. So the first step is uh, drawing the cash flow diagram. You will see that from year 5 till year 6 inclusive, I made a deposit of C amount. And uh, the first uh, withdrawal amount was at year 18 of the amount uh, of $25,000. So by looking at this cash flow diagram, you can see that the present value of uh, the withdrawals will be at year 17, okay? And uh, the future value of these annual amounts or the annuity is located at year 16. So you can equate at year 16 and say that this, uh, the final or the equivalence amount of this uh, arithmetic gradient which will be taking place at year 17 is uh, pushed to the present by one period or you can push the future of this annuity by one period and equate at year 17 so you can do whatever what you want because remember that you are using this cash flow diagram and as if you're working on a timeline where you can get the equivalence at any year here I decided uh, to equate at end of year 17. So as we said, uh, it is the present value of uh, this uh, gradient. And I will get the future of this annuity at year 17 and then get its equivalence at year... Uh, uh, I will get the future of this annuity at year 16, then get the equivalence at year 17. So uh, if we begin uh, with this side, what will be the future of the annuity? The future is uh, located at uh, the uh, last arrow. So the future of this annuity, F equals A into F knowing A, 10% N. Now what will be the number of periods? You will have to include year 5 till year 16 included as well. So this is a period of 12 years. So I will say that the future of this annuity, F equals A into F knowing A, 10% and 12 years, but the future of this annuity, as we said, it lies here, but I'm equating at year 17. So the equivalence or the final amount here will be considered as, it, uh, as if it is a present located at year 16, and I'm getting the future of it at year 17. So again, we'll have to multiply it by F knowing P10, 1, because I'm shifting it by one year. So as if all this part becomes the future uh, or the present at year 16, and I'm getting its future at year 17, so I'll multiply it by F knowing P, uh, 10, 1. Now regarding this side, when I'm getting the present of a gradient that is arithmetic, you'll have to split it into two parts, part related to the annuity of $25,000, and uh, since the gradient here is increasing by an amount of 2,000, you'll, uh, you'll have to get the uh, present worth of it alone. So you see here at uh, the right-hand side, I have two parts. I'm getting the present of the annuity, so P equals A into P knowing A, I, N. What's the period? It's 21 minus 17, or you just count 1, 2, 3, and 4, so it's 4 periods. Plus... Uh, y plus because the amount of this um, gradient is increasing by 2000 if it was decreasing you just change the sign into negative uh, so what's the present of the gradient p equals g and this is the amount of g into p knowing g i uh, n and here n is 4 so by equating uh, these two sides, you will be able to get uh, the value the unknown value of c which is 3741 so you see it's basically the same constant but it repeats uh, with different scenarios and different cash flow diagrams um, the next exercise is exercise number three how much do you need to invest in equal annual amounts for the next 10 years if you want to withdraw 5000 at the end of the 11th year and increase the annual withdrawals by one thousand dollars each year thereafter until year 25 interest rate is 
Now we see sometimes the given comes in form of a text or it's directly drawn uh, at the cash flow diagram. You have to uh, become familiar with uh, both cases. So the first step is drawing the cash flow diagram. Uh, it will look like this. Uh, and I have annuity, the year 10. And I have a gradient starting from year 11 till 25. Uh, here the present value of this gradient is already located at year 10 and the future of the annuity is located at year 10 so when I equate both sides I will have no problem at all so the future of this annuity is f equals a into f knowing a 6% 10 years equal to the present value of this gradient which is uh, the annuity so p equals a into p knowing a i n because it's 25 minus 10 or just count the arrows plus the gradient, which is 1,000, to be knowing J, 6% uh, 15. By equating, you get the value of the annuity. Now, the last exercise is the related to geometric gradients. Uh, here, in this uh, exercise, the R&D uh, group, the Research and Development Group, has uh, developed a software package that assists engineers to control a proper chemical mix for manufacturing industry. So you decided to make the software. Your first uh, operating net cash flow is estimated to be $1 million. Okay, and it will be decreasing uh, each year by 25%. So this is how you know that this is a geometric gradient because you have a percentage. First of all, it is decreasing. Then it is decreasing by a percentage, not by a fixed value. So this is a geometric gradient. Now assume that I is 15%. This is another thing to look at. You have to uh, see if the interest rate is the same as the G or is it different so that you can tell which equation you'll have to apply. So what will be the minimum price that you would be willing to sell the software, uh, knowing that the product life will be four years? Uh, so uh, regarding geometric gradients, it's, it is just uh, knowing which equation to use and directly applying the numbers to that equation. So the uh, solution will look like this. This is the given. G is the 25%, I15. Annuity is $1 million and it's decreasing by 25% each year. So this is how we knew that this is your annuity. And equals to 4 years and we need to get the present value. Since G and I are different, this means that I can uh, use this equation. That will be given to you. No need to memorize anything. So P uh, equals A into 1 minus 1 plus G into 1 plus I, both to the power N over I minus G. Now, this is the equation, the general equation that can be applied in case of geometric gradient. But you need to make sure, uh, is the, this geometric gradient increasing or decreasing? If it's increasing, then this is the plus sign in front of the G. But if, if it's decreasing, then before you uh, see the G here in, in the equation, you will have to add the negative sign, as we will do here in the solution. So you'll just say P equals A. This is the 1 million. Into 1 minus. Now this part, the 1 plus G, consider it here. 1 plus, I open the bracket and it said minus 0 0.25. Close it into 1 plus I. This is the 15%. All of this bracket is to the power 4. Over. You have I, the 15%, so it's 0 0.15, minus G. But however, G has a negative sign as well. So when you open the bracket, you say, you say here, I minus, this is the G. The G includes a negative sign. So please pay attention to this point. When we have a decreasing gradient, don't forget uh, the negative sign before it. You do not change anything in the way of solution. Just mind the sign of it. And you will see that the final answer will be uh, uh, this amount. And this is your present value.
So this is all what you need to know about uh, the geometric gradients and uh, the other types of gradients that we have solved exercises related to it uh, today. Uh, thank you for listening.